In Magic the Gathering, and Commander specifically, sometimes we come across a deck, a strategy, or commander that we absolutely love. You build a rough draft version of the deck from cards you may already own, you play the deck a bit, then you start to add more cards to your collection to add to the deck. Then you play the deck a little bit more. The more you play the deck, the more the changes, the more upgrades, the more side grades you start to add to it. Until finally, you find the version of the deck that best suits you. Today, we're going to be talking about this process in EDH deck building. We'll go over the different steps a typical deck building process goes through, or you can go through. We'll cover the process of fine tuning these decks down to the best balance of cards. And I'll share a deck with you that I feel has gone through this process and come out great. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax and enjoy as I take you on a drive through the anatomy of a beautifully designed commander deck. If you guys are enjoying this content, please feel free to like and subscribe and check out my Patreon in the description below where you can get an extra video every single week. And based on the tier of patron that you are, you can recommend a video that you'd like to see and I can review decks that you have built personally. If that interests you, hopefully I'll see you there. I believe that commander decks should have some sort of lifespan and a growing up phase. Maybe sometimes you'll see others say that you shouldn't upgrade your decks or that you should only upgrade to a certain extent before it's too far gone. While I can sometimes see how there's almost a never ending cycle or even an arms race to make your decks better and better and better, there's nothing wrong with making changes to a deck that isn't quite performing how you like it to. A beautifully crafted commander deck has gone through many different iterations in its lifetime and has seen many different forms. Let's talk about the first draft. The first draft is what you'll typically see in most of my videos. A first reading of the deck, a game plan it's looking to achieve, and a balanced 99 that's a good amount of ramp, removal, card draw, and value for the main strategy. This deck is going to be a great jumping off point that should expand as you play more of it. While it may be good on its own and generically decent at doing what it needs to do, only after truly playing the deck can you really optimize it down to what it needs to be. In games you play for real, you'll probably notice you draw plenty of cards, so maybe it's time to dial that back a little bit. You take out two of your card draw sources and decide to add more to your removal and ramp packages. Then let's say you end up having too much removal and it starts to crowd up your hand when playing games so you decide to dial back a little bit more and add more gas to your main strategy these small adjustments over time will start to break you out of the typical cookie cutter numbers that you normally see these numbers are typically decent for starting points. So I'm never gonna say that you shouldn't at least start there, but changes will be made based off of many factors such as the power level of your typical pods, your LGS's meta, or maybe your best friend's pet deck that you play against often and hate. Now, you shouldn't try to change your deck up every single game. It's important to know what you are actually lacking in your games. And having a one-off game where maybe you draw dead is not gonna be sufficient enough evidence to see what you should be changing about your deck. Aim to make adjustments to your decks every four to five games. This gets you a pretty decent sample size to see what has gone right and what has gone wrong. And keep in mind, what may feel like a small adjustment can actually be a really big one. So remember that less is more. So after your first and second and third and fourth iterations of the deck, you start to see patterns in both your gameplay and the deck itself. This is where you might find the most growing pains. There's so many cards to choose from, but only so many slots. This is the glass ceiling that most decks don't go past. And here's how you can break through it. At this stage, it's time to look at each and every card individually. Your standard for what should and should not be allowed in your deck has become much higher. Cards will need to serve more than one purpose, and hopefully that extra purpose is towards your main strategy. Removal itself is not quite good enough anymore unless it's one to two mana. What card can remove things and also get you further ahead in your game plan? Card draw is great. Which cards can draw you things and serve the greater purpose of your deck? And if a card is serving as some sort of engine, can you have cards in your deck that are able to support it? Or use its value effectively. Finding cards that serve multiple purposes and help bring your strategy forward are going to propel your deck into the next level of optimization. Your deck can also start to include more combos from this. Now, not infinite combos that win you the game per se, but combos and interactions of two to three cards that work really well together. This is where you start to really min-max your deck so that there is no dead cards. When everything goes wrong, you want to be able to trust that your deck will have your back and can recover from most spots. Decks with cards that serve multiple purposes and game plans at once typically are more resilient and can come back quicker even when the game is brought to a halt. Trust me, it's hard to find cards like this, and it's harder to cut cards that aren't quite doing the job for you in order to make space for cards that do. But as you make these cuts, your deck will start to come alive. Another thing I'd like to add to this next level of optimization 
is the fact that, bear with me, you don't actually need to have the minimum or maximum amount of cards that sometimes are recommended. In previous videos and in the past, I do recommend certain amounts of removal or ramp or card draw, but this next level of optimization is decks specifically for you. And how much of these things does your deck actually need? Depending on the speed of your deck, you might need less or more removal. Depending on how your curve is, you might need less or more mana sources, whether that be lands or mana rocks. Depending on how much your commander deck actually draws, you might not need so much card draw. This is where you can find decks where maybe they have six pieces of ramp. Maybe they only have 13 pieces of removal. Maybe they have just a couple of ways to draw cards, but the deck still runs fine. This is because it's probably gone through many different iterations to figure out what's the right amount of cards they actually need for these specific categories. And maybe their main strategy isn't so resource hungry, so they don't need as much for all these things. Basically, I'm saying as you go throughout playing your deck, you get to see more nuance of how much these things you actually truly need. Those original numbers and figures of removal, card draw, and ramp are great starting points. And as you start to optimize, you'll see how much of these things you truly, truly need. Now, the last thing I'll say is probably the most important thing for true optimization. Within your typical value section, aka your main strategy, you can and should add subsections to this portion of your deck. Not every deck is gonna have 20 cards that fit the exact description of what you're looking for in your game plan. But also, you'll come across decks that might completely counter your strategy that you're going for. So being flexible in how you navigate a game with your deck is very important. You want to have plenty of silver bullets that can get past strategies that stop you the most. You want to be able to pivot when maybe you're being targeted and have ways of coming back or even going over the targeting. And you wanna make sure that your deck can do multiple things throughout a game and not just sit around doing nothing because your main strategy is completely gone. Now, as I said in the beginning, I have a deck I want to briefly talk about that I think has gone through this exact process. Queen Marchesa is a deck I've been wanting to make for quite some time. However, my biggest pull away from playing her has been the fact that she's just a very generic value commander. I love the flavor and I love the color combo, but finding an interesting way to play her has been quite a struggle. However, this deck has now slowly become more and more put together as I play it. My main game plan is a mix of control, goad, extra combats, tokens, politics, and even pillow fort. Most cards in the deck while having the broad categories they can fall under, can also fall under most other categories as well. My draw support is also token anthems. Removal is also protection. Politics is also pillow fort. And extra combats are also ramp and control. Each card works together with each other card to form a cohesive unit of 99 cards that gets the job done. The process of making these changes, testing the deck, Cutting and adding cards takes many games and many, many test hands. But when you find the process and put in the time to nurture the deck, you'll find the fun and beauty in deck building. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe and comment down below maybe your deck that you find is absolutely beautiful. Maybe it's a pet deck of yours. Or maybe it's a deck that has seen the test of time and you can't seem to stop playing. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. I want to take this time now to thank my patrons. Your support truly means so much to me. Thank you to Red Toter, Thalassocrat, George Vazanellis, Philly123, Chris Smith, Son of Zygote, Ruby Storm, Raphael DDL, Hayo, and Justin. You guys are what makes this thing possible. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I'll see you guys all next time.